I think he was aware of the fact that he was part of a diaspora. I mean, there was the diaspora that was connected, um, that everything was connected out there. At the end of the day, uh, however militant fellow were, he was a good Yoruba boy, you know. He also was quite um, aware of the fact that he had to go to America to be realigned in his thinking, uh, pro-African. Um, he realized that a lot of the lost traditions had been kept and transferred from one generation to, to another. Because all the Afro-Cubans scattered all over the world were originally Africans who managed to preserve the little knowledge they had. And that was their sort of like reconnection to back home. So along, alongst the lines, a lot of things got lost, but he still respected the fact that these guys are, sometimes we actually need to go to these guys and go and learn from them and then also teach them. For example, pronunciations and things like that, they're very important in the Yoruba language. It's like you say, do, re, mi, and if you say something, do, do. It's different from do, do. It's really different from do, do. So they are, you know, so yeah. He did uh, have a lot of uh, respect and time for those uh, in the diaspora. What we heard, what we younger ones heard was that um, if you listen to fellow classics like Lady and Shakara, uh, the tenor sax player, Igo Chico, used to jeer. You know, they had an ongoing battle with Fela. And uh, you know how Fela is really strict and precise when he's like, mm, when he looks back and calls, take it, the horns have to come in immediately. And most of the time, Igo Chico will come in after everybody else. And Fela used to get on his case and he used to say, you think it's a trumpet, three notes, pa, 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 pa. You know, <laughs> saxophone. Look, I use all the finger. I use this. I use that. 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 Even this and this. That. 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 It's not. Blah, 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 blah. And then fella started practicing the saxophone. One day he just came out with a horn, and he, everybody was like, "Just like that." That's what we heard. No, because I remember. <laughs> no, I remembered when he used to be inspired by a trumpet player called Clifford Brown. Yep. Because when I used to he used to take these fantastic eye riffs and quick notes, you know. But um, what year did he actually? He just picked up a saxophone like that. He picked it up and worked it out. He's mathematical, he's a genius. I mean, once you play the piano, that's why music institutions insist, no matter what instrument you play, you must learn the piano. Right. It's like a transfer, you transfer skills. Yep. Once you know where the fingering and even the guitar, as a piano player, I teach, I look at my guitar player and say, you're playing it wrong. Give me, let me show you. I can do that. When it comes to fella, it always depends on your environment, who you were raised by, your friends. Many people still don't like him. Many people consider him a hero. I have many friends that don't even listen to his music. I have friends that are friends with me because of him. It really depends on the person. But I think this movie, many people misunderstand him and they like to take things out, bad things about him. He had many wives, he smoked. But he don't focus on the important things, the things that he did. And because of that, there are many, many problems. So this movie focuses on the important things as well as the funny things, but the important things. And because of that, if this movie is shown in Nigeria to the youths, it will explain everything in detail to them. Well, it's opening in... Uh, thank you. Yeah, they need the movie. It's opening in Lagos uh, on 12th of October during celebration and is then oh. going out across all the Silverbird cinemas. Well, first of all, Afrobeats with an S on the end is a stolen property. 
I mean, the music's got nothing to do with Afrobeat at all. Somebody, it's just a marketing ploy. Somebody came up with an idea. I think it used to be called Niger Pop. I quite like some of the music, um, but I yab those guys when I see them. <laughs> you know, um, some of them are acknowledging. For, I mean, because look, a lot of sweat had to go through before that music became what it was, and. Uh, I feel it's important for people to acknowledge where it came from and what they're, they've taken this name and just stuck an S on the end. You know, it's a bit kind of radical, isn't it? Some of them acknowledge that. You know, uh, people like uh, DeBang, uh, uh, Wizkid, um, Ice Prince. You know, some of those boys are trying. Um, it's been very difficult for the reason I mentioned in the film that the music is so long. And if you don't get on the radio, it's tricky. Why? That's the reason I, I, f I feel the fella isn't as globally known as Bob Marley was, because his songs were nice and clipped and, you know, two and a half, three minutes, boom, boom, finished. Anyway, uh, I'm on a mission. <laughs> and I think this film is going to help us enormously in just getting the word out there. Wouldn't you say, Madi? I think in a lot of cases, the, these musicians that don't sing about political things or truth, and they think about women or money, mm. it's because they have to make money themselves. Political music doesn't sell as much as it should, and you have to eat. Do you listen to my father? Your father. Yeah. He has so many songs, and his biggest hit is Bang Bang Bang. <laughs> the one song he decides to sing about sex. I know, it's unfortunate. No, it's it is. Sold, it's sold. Yeah, it was sold. so big. And the only other song, that, there were two more that were very big hits as well. Wonder, Wonder, and Sorry, Sorry. But Bang, Bang, Bang was the biggest. So in my case, I am not going to sing about money at all. <laughs> Fela was one of a kind. You can compare him to the musicians now, nowadays, because um, I th believe they are just all about the money. But Fela wasn't about the money. Because um, it was down to earth. Fela was down to earth. Even in his room, if you go to, I don't know if you've been to the museum. Have you been to the museum? You know, some, you believe, in, you believe he's meant to live a life of luxury. But he only has a mattress on the floor. And there was a time he even decided to be sleeping on the floor. And, and his I books. Said, his books and his acid drops. You know, um, you know acid drops, I don't know if they're still available. Uh, they're sweets, you know. And um, I used to have to go to the factory and get them in, you know, cases, <laughs> carry them down to Lagos for fellow to chew on. And Swiss roll, he used to like Swiss <laughs> roll. I had to, on the way to the airport, I had to stop at every Pakistani grocer's and, and clear their shelves of Swiss roll. <laughs> so you don't misunderstand. When I said my music is not going to be so political, it doesn't mean it's not going to be tackling the same problems he did. It's more about self-awareness. We complain a lot about leaders and the things that they do, when around us the people are just as corrupt. You face the people, the people are the leaders. If you don't change the people, the leaders will never change. You can't depend so much on the leaders when every single person you cannot trust. So it will be about self-awareness, truth, what makes us human, and the things we, en we need to do to become better people, to make a better world. I think that's what my father is doing as well. There's always hope for that. There are many people that sing about truth, and again, it's not so much on them, but to their audience. People don't listen to music that they need to listen to. Some people just listen to music because they just want to have something in the background to get by. But I think there will come a time where we'll have no option but to sing about these things. It starts from somewhere and to go bigger. We will sing about these things. But again, there's nothing wrong with singing about love or woman. Sure. It can be poetic, it can be nice. But it will, it will exist and they will sing about it. Really, really, honestly, um, it, someone, one, Undebusi 
made a comment. He said, Fela said to everyone who was living with him and who was part of what he believed in, whatever you do in life, don't do it because of the monetary value. Do it because it's the right thing to do. Do it because you enjoy doing it and then leave it to posterity. Even long after you're gone, if you have done the right thing, they will come for you. And I think a lot of people who came to live with him eventually, most of them were on their way to become the dregs of society. Some of them were even armed robbers. And some, after they left, they actually picked up guns and you know they became armed robbers. But they had something to believe in. The lost cause that most people would normally be walking around the streets of Lagos, lost cause in their cause in their minds, you know, hopelessness of the situation, you know. Fella gave them hope. The same guy said some of them were plumbers, some of them were carpenters. You had a meaning, you had a purpose. You were one tiny part of the machinery that kept the thing going. Fifty weeks a year, fella was performing live, four times a week. We had a job. And someone would get into that organization, learn how to play only fella music on a guitar. And before you knew it, within a month, he can play every repertoire that was the set list. And then suddenly, we come back from Europe, somebody drops from the band. He's taking his place. Fella, I can play the guitar. I can play all the songs. Huh. OK, go and see Dele. Dele, well, yeah, he can. And then, you know, so. But don't worry, wait for my memoirs. I think it's important to add that uh, the story isn't over, you know. Um, Femi and uh, Sheun are both front and center in every um, protest, in every struggle. The music is eloquent and raising the issues that Fella was talking about. So in that sense, nothing has changed. And now we've got this one over here, look, <laughs> <laughs> coming up. About to start th three years at uh, Trinity? Four years. Four years, right. So uh, what's going to come at the end of that? We don't know. And Shalewa is a record producer now. She's got her own studio here in London. Yeah. And uh, up the end there is a commodities dealer. Big program. time. Hmm? Well, you're a programmer for a commodities <laughs> dealer. It comes to the same thing. <laughs> so the beat goes on. Thank you all very much. And please spread the word. Thank you.